Hello, I'm David. In this video I will show you how to assemble and upgrade Africa Twin Rear Shock. I'm going to use this repair kit. Inside it you can find oil seal, slide bushing, seal head o-ring, dust seal and o-ring for original reservoir cap. Also I'm going to use this new air can cap so I can upgrade reservoir. There is also step by step instruction and stickers. Check out our Facebook page for more details. Let's start with shock body assembly. These banjo fittings have got two different bending angles, so pay attention to it. I use two copper washers on this side to align it correctly because this banjo fitting is thinner than original one. Using thread locking fluid is always a good idea. This new hose should be mounted at the same angle as the old one. It is good to use a photo as reference. I notice a small oil leakage, so after a couple of days I torque it to 23 newton meters. There was no problem with this one, but I torque it later to 18 newton meters anyway. Now it's time for air can assembly. Make sure that surface inside is smooth and without any scratches. You can use abrasive material to achieve this. You should grease all parts before assembly using a shock absorber oil. Double check that securing ring is placed well, otherwise reservoir can explode. Use something soft to lock this cap in place. Now it's time to assemble piston and seal head. It's important to secure sharp edges using a tape or special tool. We start with pressing in the slide bushing into the seal head. To make it easier I loop it using oil. We are using only piston rod, so you don't need any special tools. You can notice sound change when it is ready. And it is ready. Now remove tape and slide out the seal head. It's time to mount the dust seal. You just press it in using a hand.
Now we switch to piston rod. Put in rubber bumper and shock body metal cover on the rod. Secure it using a tape to keep it in one piece. Now we switch back to the seal head. Let's install main oil seal. We start with thin metal washer. Next we loop new oil seal. Before inserting new oil seal, we put in oil seal support plate. It is important part of the seal, so don't forget it. Every step you should check everything to avoid further problems. Now I loop o-ring and insert it into oil seal. It fits pretty tight. I think you can insert this o-ring into seal before putting this oil seal into seal head. I press it couple more times to make sure it is placed well. Now it's time for big washer securing this seal. The last part is piston rebound rubber bumper. Now this seal head looks like new one. Before installing seal head on the rod, I use some securing tape. Now it's time to install the piston. Avoid dropping it because shim stack may fall apart. It is built in specific order so without photo or notes you can't build it properly. I'm using some thread locking fluid and new piston rod nut. I'm using torque wrench and torque it to 14 newton meters torque. You may notice that I forgot to install this seal head o ring. It is not a big problem, just secure the piston with tape to avoid damaging the o ring. After a second our problem is solved. Before putting piston inside the shock tube we need to loop everything with oil. After pushing seal head inside we can lock it inside with securing ring. Make sure it is placed well around. We don't want to have piston and oil flying around our home. Now we push out the seal head to lock it in its place. We can double check seal head and securing ring. Now I install stem to make this shock easier to pump. Finally we can start shock bleeding process. I use this grade 3 oil for rear shock absorbers. 
basically you press the shock in, wait and pull it out. You need to repeat it a lot of times. Keep eye on the oil level inside the reservoir and keep adding more oil. Change shock position to help air bubbles flow up to the reservoir. Also don't move the piston too fast. Fast piston movement causes high oil flow speed and cavitation starts to occur. Try couple different positions and think how air bubble would like to go. At the end you shall not see any air bubbles coming from the shock. Anyway, pump the shock a couple more times in various positions to make sure there is no air left inside. Now we are installing bladder to the new cap. Of course we are using oil to loop parts before assembly. Now I push in the shock all the way in. Make it slowly to prevent cavitation. Next I add more oil to make sure it will overflow a little during bladder installation. Before putting bladder inside I pump it a little. It shouldn't be collapsed like now. After couple of pumps it looks much better. Now we are putting bladder in. It will stuck at this moment and to push it further you need to screw out the valve core. Push the cover until there will be access to the securing ring groove. Now we are installing the securing ring. When the cap is secured we can screw in the valve core. There is tiny and short thread so don't use too much force. Now we are pumping bladder a little to push it out. You should pump it a little slower. Now we pump the shock to 10 bar and leave it for some time to check for any oil leakage. If there is everything fine we can mount back shock tube metal cover. Of course you should always use professional tools. To punch it harder I use some wood to avoid damaging the shock cover or piston rod. Now it's time to adjust the pressure inside this shock. We mark a line 1 cm before end of the piston rod. Now I'm setting pressure to 14 bar. It is important to disconnect the pump in this step. Now we are pressing in this shock to mark 1 cm line. We should notice 27 kg on the scale for right pressure. Last part is adding some hardware to this shock absorber.
It is almost ready, but you may notice this broken dust seal. I'm going now to replace it with this neoprene cover. So again we need to disassemble some parts. I trim this foam cover to length of the shock absorber using a scissors. I use some cyanoacrylate to glue the stitches, otherwise the cover will break apart. To secure this cover in place I use small and low profile zip ties connected together. Before next step we need to move rubber bumper down a little. To secure the stem you should use some thread locking fluid. It is good idea to torque it using piece of wood. Make sure that this pin is in the right place. Now we press in this rubber bumper to lock it in place. Last step is tightening the spring on the bike to set the sack correctly. Good job, your shock is now like new and you can keep riding.